Hi, Rob Carsten here from Excelitus Technologies. I'm the uh, sales director for EMEA for the Fosion brand of products. I'm here to talk to you today about our involvement at Drupa, in particular with our Nexus One product, which we're highlighting uh, in its applications for Flexo and for Industry 4.0. A little bit about us. Fusion Technology is the number one in LED curing. We've been in this business for over 20 years. Uh, we've shipped well over 150,000 uh, light sources and we're 100% LED focused. As part of Excelitas, we now have a broader range of products which include IR, NIR, Excimer, UVC, and basically the whole suite of uh, curing solutions and drying solutions for the whole print industry. But at Fosion, we focus on the UV LED side. So if we look at where we are at the moment in terms of the evolution of our industry, in terms of manufacturing, are we looking at evolution, not revolution? So we had our first industrial revolution, which profoundly changed the way goods are manufactured, resulting in then unthinkable gains in productivity, quality control, and consistency. Since then, there have been three more revolutions have occurred, with manufacturers currently reaping the rewards of industrial automation benefits of Industry 4.0. Theoretically, the next step in evolution is full automation, in which workers are no longer needed to create output, but I don't think that's actually going to happen. Such a facility can literally operate in the dark, and sometimes referred to as a lights-out factory. If we look where we want to get to, and quite often we set ourselves goals which are not necessarily realistic and achievable, but we look at ways in which, how do we get technology in a format that allows us to move in that direction? How can we have more industry um, uh, 4.0 type applications? So if we look at the digital factory for the future, and digital LED technology plays a key role in that. If you look at our light sources that we manufacture, they're basically digital pieces of equipment. They're solid state, they have uh, TCP IP output, and they fit very well in a factory 4.0 uh, environment. So the convergence of digital technologies and the manufacturing process are really what we're all about, and that's where our technologies fit in. So LED, in terms of process control, offers better control and uh, better yields as a result. You have better data flow. So LED is a stable and predictable technology which enables lots of communication with um, the likes of some of the other technologies that we've been hearing about today. And LED, in terms of the internet of things, we can monitor, we can communicate, and can be controlled effectively and remotely through the internet, through the cloud, and we can take all that information. Using things like AI, we can start to analyze all this information and start to look at things like predictive maintenance, which is a very important uh, tool for the future in terms of automating uh, our factories. So minimal predictive maintenance. Uh, LED as a technology has very little maintenance anyway, but we're able to monitor a number of the outputs from the light source and how it's being operated. We couple that together with our knowledge in terms of how over many millions of hours of product testing, we've been able to determine certain key parameters and factors on the performance of the light source, which allows us then to interpret that information in terms of the longevity and the reliability of the light source. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. If we look at Industry 4.0 enabled print facilities, we're beginning able to run a factory, being able to run a factory 24-7 with limited labor and high efficiencies. That's really the holy grail of manufacturing. And it's also a practical reality for a lot of our customers at the moment in that they're finding shortages of skilled labor. It's very difficult to find people to work within the factories. So we need to find ways of being able to automate factories, which minimize the amount of skilled labor that we need. So pre-production automation in terms of MIS and ERP, we look at job creation, job cost estimation, and, and order placement. In terms of production, 
we're starting to look at the cloud, AI, OPC, UA. Uh, that's where things like the, the image rip, the vision systems, the material handling, so the robotics, the die cutting, the lasers, print process control, remote monitoring, print heads, analogs, rollers, ink delivery and curing lamps, our part, are all part of that production process in, to take us through to the order fulfillment. Now the, the order placement can all be done online. All these other processes are possibly, uh, can possibly be automated so that we then have the, uh, the full process from the online experience through to the order fulfillment, all within an automated factory environment. So one of the key products that we're introducing and will be um, for uh, introducing and discussing at Drupal will be the Nexus product range. So this is a, a product uh, which is designed to be either retrofitted onto existing presses to upgrade them from uh, purely analog to more digital uh, technology. Uh, it's a, a fully air-cooled system. We will have versions of this technology available in water-cooled. Uh, we'll be expanding that range both with water-cooled, air-cooled, and also with much larger versions uh, at the moment. And so what we currently have is uh, a known form factor with easy-to-fit uh, T-slot type mountings. Uh, it has a very easy filter exchange, which is on the top of the lamp. Uh, it has an easy protective glass front, which can be removed and cleaned. Uh, the Fosion swirl, which is at the front, uh, changes color according to the lamp state, so you can see whether it's enabled, disabled, whether it's active and ready. Uh, it's the first lamp in the industry which comes with a full five-year warranty on the full system. So we're talking the lamps, the power, the control, the cables, everything. And you can, it's uh, because of the density of the diodes, and I'll have a little slide on that at the moment, uh, we can run very high speeds of up to 220 per minute uh, curing speed. So it's the, the most powerful air-cooled uh, lamp in the industry for flexo printing. On the design of the Nexus One, you have a cassette style housing with brackets and shielding uh, you have an air-cooled solution, as we said, so there's no chiller required, so it minimizes the investment. And also, one of the issues you have with the chiller, of course, is the chiller needs electrical power as well. So you'll find that on a like-for-like -like basis, an air-cooled system is up to 25% more efficient uh, in terms of energy consumption than a water-cooled system because you don't have to drive the chiller. So we use it up to 600 millimeters. Uh, this is an industry known um, uh, form factor and mounting design will easily fit onto existing mountings. Uh, airflow is at the back of the press uh, and it's quite press operation, LED sound level below um, press operation levels. If we look at Nexus One, the light source setup, you can see where the, uh, the exhaust comes, uh, the air intakes comes in the top, the exhaust comes out the back. Uh, and the, uh, you have the replaceable glass on the front. Uh, if we go to the next slide, you can actually see where the, the filter and the glass are both interchangeable uh, for easy access on the operator side. And this allows off-the-shelf filter material, no plastic frame, and removable secondary glass cover, which can be replaced and cleaned uh, by the operator. So it's all easy accessible. On the front of the lamp, we have uh, a swirl, which is our Fosion logo, uh, our product logo, which uh, indicates the status of the lamp. So it could be on off. It is on off, in, is station enabled. The UV is on. There can be a warning. Uh, there could be a fault error. The fault error may be something simple like the, your filter is clogged. The warning will tell you that the, the lamp is maybe overheating because the filter is getting clogged. And then the actual warning could be that now the filter's too clogged, you're not getting air f flow through the lamp properly and it's overheating. So you'll need to take the, uh, the filter out and clean it, for example. One of the other important features of this technology is that it delivers high amounts of energy. Uh, and that's due to the high level of diode that we use within the lamp. 
So more diodes is higher energy density, it's higher press speed. So the Nexus one typically has 120 diodes in 12 rows per substrate, whereas some of our suppliers use much, uh, competitors use a, a, a much lower density diode count, have the same peak irradiance, but obviously a lot less dyes. They're using a, a quarter of the number of dyes that we have. So if we look at that in terms of an output, you can see how in the red line there, how the, uh, uh, the lower diode count produces higher intensity over a shorter area, but the higher density phosion lamp gives you much more energy over a much larger area, which gives you more dose, which is what the ink companies will tell you is required to give you good curing on your printing. In terms of uh, retrofitting, it's an easy installation can all be done in a day or two. Uh, and we've retrofitted many presses, whether it's MPS, Nilpeter, Gallus, uh, uh, Bobst, and all the others. Uh, one of the other features that we're developing with this light source is the Fosion Link, which rem allows remote LED performance monitoring. So you can look at how the lamp is performing over 24-7, 365 days a year remotely. There'll be an app to do that and you'll be able to look at how the lamps are performed, how they're being used, what issues there are in terms of the lamp, in terms of um, any predictive maintenance, and this is all being in development at the moment. Uh, so these are the, the kind of status uh, pictures of the lamp, and then you can look here in terms of the, um, the link examples for remote monitoring. And then one of the other features uh, we're looking at will be the um, the valid cure, which is the real-time lamp performance monitoring, which will tell you on a substrate by substrate basis how the lamp is performing, um, whether it's within the parameters that you've set for your process. So it's another control enabling feature, again, with Industry 4.0, allowing you to control your process parameters. So if you're going to Drupa this year and you're interested in any of these issues, please contact us. If you're looking to convert from mercury to LED, if you're interested in reducing energy usage by up to 80%, if you want to improve performance and yield on your press with a high dose Nexus lamp, or moving to the factory of the future with Industry 4.0, then you need to speak to us. We will be attending Drupa, so please uh, contact us to arrange to me to discuss about how you can switch. Uh, Nexus can help you to turn, run your business better in the future. So here are my contact details, Rob Carston. Uh, you can coordinate that through me, and then we can arrange to meet up at Drupa and we can discuss how we can help you do a better job of, of your um, print process. Thank you very much. <laughs>